I went to Red Bull Kumite. It was tight. I haven't done commentary at a live event like that offline in about two years. The last time I did it was Evo Japan 2020. It was really nice to go and do the event. I had a blast. I really enjoyed just going and being around people again. Everybody that was there, like all the players and all the staff, all of us had to negative COVID tests within three days of arriving to the event and then negative COVID test on site. And then unless we were literally in the ring commentating, we were all messed up. So a lot of people have been asking, what's up with you guys standing in the cage? Like if you watch Red Bull at all, we are just in the cage. This is what it looks like. We we're standing in this cage and the players were like in these chairs and we were just, this is how, like this is what we did. We just stood. That is the Red Bull Kumite way. The way Red Bull Kumite has operated and probably always will operate is that the commentators are posted up in the cage and they are right there next to the players watching the matches i was commentating like there's a monitor down here that we're looking at but i also would commentate by looking at this monitor right here the players were they're right next to us they can hear everything that's happening they can hear the crowd that is what kumite wants that's what they want the experience to be they're like yo players you're gonna be in the cage it's gonna be hectic and it's gonna be fucking wild so that is like what they want the show to be like so we interact with the players in the cage and we talk to them and like you know we're right next to them and we get hype and shit and we say stuff and etc cetera, etc cetera. and rob tv standing there like going let's go brian i realized brian Brian is two syllables, but not when Rob TV says it. And I was like, damn, that's impressive. You know, you're yelling for the players, you interact with the crowd, etc. Somebody's put in quotes, the crowd. Yeah, there was not that many attendees. It definitely got announced like mad late. And it was like super late, I think, on getting people info about coming to the event and all this kind of stuff. You know, I'm sure Red Bull is very sad about the lack of a crowd. However, I'm just sitting there like, hell yeah, smaller crowd, less chance I get sick, let's go. Yeah, it's a shame too, there was no LCQ stream. I asked about the LCQ, well, you know, historically when I ask about the LCQ stream, uh, I get fired from doing CPT events. However, I was like, you know, what's up? Like, I didn't, you know, there's no LCQ stream. And they were basically like, well, normally we stream the LCQ, but because we're doing Strive and Gear, we stream those instead of streaming the lcqs we would need like another day probably to stream or we'd have to split the stream which we didn't want to do so it was either add another day which is like very expensive or not stream the lcqs and i was like that's a shame i like the lcqs but all right and then i didn't get fired which is like revolutionary as far as i'm concerned now i agree with you i would love to see an lcq stream right having another stream means you need to have another crew to run the stream and it means you need to have commentators to commentate on that so i'm kind of not that surprised they didn't want to do either of those things but it is a shame i like you know me and everybody else we love watching the lcq commentating in the stage is really fun i gotta say like commentating up there with all the players and everything when we we're in the first meeting like there was a question about i think rob asked he's like i'm gonna be right next to the player should i like not say some shit or and i was just like no you should say whatever the fuck you want like you should never adjust your commentary based on the players being right there if they listen to you on commentary and they heed your advice, they can choose to listen to you. But like, you know, the other person also can hear you and that's just the nature of the beast. Like that's just part, that is part of this event. It's a particular thing about this event. It's part of the experience that they want. When I was commentating Apology Man's match and he knocked down Gobo in the corner, I said something like, oh, he's got the knockdown here and he has to watch for bursts and then he baited the burst after. And in my mind, I think to myself, like he could have heard me and chose to do that or he could have just been smart and done it. I don't know, but like, I'm, it's not gonna stop me from saying the burst is a factor. Yeah, I gotta tell you, Japanese players also understand the word burst, okay? Maybe Gobo heard me and was like, word, I should burst, and then he burst. The funniest thing about commentary now is like, yeah, I'm just commentating with people. It doesn't even have to be me, and they're just like, oh my God, is this gonna kill? They should make a show for that. Isn't that what Steve said? It's funny, because I made a joke about it in the player room. I was like, damn, that'd be good for a game show about someone dying. And then I just started cracking up and I was like, are you a Will It Kill fan? He's like, hell yeah. Steve talking about the trumpet killing his grandma wasn't that funny until the next game when Faust threw the trumpet and he just yelled grandma. <laughs> it was pretty funny the first time he said it too. A lot of people asked about the analysis. They were like, oh yeah, you were doing all this analysis Sunday. So I think our Sunday schedule was originally all kinds of weird. I think I was gonna be the interviewer all day on Sunday. And I was like, you have Persia here and I'm bad at interviews. She's a fucking professional and I'm not. And she was like, yeah, I would love to do the interviews. So we like swapped 
and I had an opportunity to do the Street Fighter commentary, but Steve was like not, he wasn't scheduled on Sunday. You know, Steve told me before the event, he's like, yeah, Saturday, I'm going to wear like this sweater, but Sunday, I got this sick suit. I didn't have the heart to tell him he wasn't scheduled for Sunday. So I was like, yeah, that sounds tight. He had it in the email. I just don't think he looked. And uh, then when we were like went in, I was like, okay, I'll I'll take the analysis blocks. Why doesn't Steve do the commentary blocks? And they're like, perfect. Sounds great. So we made that swap. And I'm so happy because Persia is a fucking great interviewer. And I, I can do an interview, but I'm not an interviewer. My questions would have probably been like very game focused, actually. I would have been probably very specific, which might not have been. I don't know if that's better or worse for interviews, to be honest. It, it might depend on the person. But the, the analysis segments, I don't know if people understand. We're holding handheld mics. We have just an iPad. I'd be on camera. I'm holding the mic like this. And then I like pull my knees up to my chest. And then I'm doing this. Like I'm like, OK, so it goes here. And then this happens, and then I draw this line here, and then do this. I was like juggling. It was like there was like a lot going on. This outfit is out of control. Like, I saw this and was like, bro, I'm so happy I'm not standing next to you. What the fuck? His outfit was so sick. The best part, by the way, I was walking around, like we got some food, and I was walking around, and I just see Steve in the fucking lobby, like at the front desk, like talking to the person in this full ass suit. And Steve's like, I lost my room key. Steve is just down here carrying all, like this is all his regular clothes in here, right? Carrying all this shit after the show because he lost his room key. Casey, Steve in the wild. Oh my God, he's so famous. <laughs> he does not like this, by the way. Steve is not a fan. He does not like this. Don't do this to him. How soon did we know about Happy Chaos? So this is the reveal. I'll play the video. Joe and me and Steve all, when we got there, was like, hey, don't tell us. We don't want to know anything. And they were like, yeah, we won't tell you. This is Stumblebee's video on Twitter. Notice, by the way, notice this reveal is coming up. Look at my strategy here. I was ready. Look at where I am. I am so safely in the back within escape distance. Joe is right up there. And the monitor, look at me lean back too. The monitor is like down here that we're watching on. Right? So, like, I can't even see. I haven't even watched the trailer. I, I didn't even watch it a second time. I have seen probably one fifth of the trailer. Because you may notice that these two are constantly getting in the way of the monitor by leaning and stuff. So, I don't, I don't really see that much of the trailer. Especially, like, as it goes on, they... They start like jumping in front of, yeah, like right here. I'm like, dude, I can't see shit, but I'm safe. See the lane? I can't see shit, but I'm safe. L look, I can't see a damn thing. I'm peeping over here, no vision. Peeping over there, no vision. I can't see anything. Yeah, I'll watch it again right after this. Steve runs in front of the monitor. Joe's getting hive. It's hard to see. Yeah, also my arms are behind my back for safety. So I didn't get to see even right there. I'm like, I can't see. <laughs> I can't see. All right, let me check it out. You guys have all seen this by now, so we can just watch it together. There's no way you'll believe me when I Oh, is this the English one? But I'm really hoping you guys win. Where's the Japanese guy? <laughs> I like this song. I don't know how it's going to sound in the game. I forgot about it in two seconds. But this is pretty good. That's about it. Yeah, this thing is tight. They called him Broken in the trailer, by the way. Did you notice that? They said the gunslinging Broken Messiah. This, like, hot bag where he leaves the clone and it leaves a hurt box, that shit is tight. Leaving a clone like that, I wonder how, wow. That looked like 5K, 6P. Oh, he reloads, so he has a reload animation. I didn't see this when I was watching on the big screen either, right? Damn, that has pretty good reach. You see him with the gun? He's got ice clone, and then he reloads. Maybe, yeah, it could be a 2S or something. 2S would be way better than 2D there. He has six bullets. And then he has a gauge as well. So he has like a stance, it seems like, right? Where he can walk and shoot because he does this a couple of times. And he has bullets he has to reload. That reload animation looked kind of long. 
Him shooting that is pretty funny. This looks like it tracks, right? Perhaps it does shoot straight behind him and Faust had already teleported. That start with the super looks so cool. Let me see the Glock Oki. Okay, that's facts. Pretty soon, right? November 30th. Yeah, his intro is hilarious. He walks past Soul. He's like, what's good, brother? Shoots him the finger guns. He looks pretty cool. Yeah, as he's in like this gun stance or whatever, this is getting smaller. I see, I see. For Kimor, what up? This, like at the orange one here, did this guard break? Because that first one, when it was green, did not. Damn, this shit's gonna be shotgun pressure all over again. Yeah, that install is probably, that's probably a buff. I didn't really have that much interest in him because I didn't play the story, so I don't know who the fuck he is, really, to be honest with you. However, I think he visually, he looks tight. I'm I'm interested in playing him. I mean, I heard the Japanese live. I know what he sounds like. I think all the DLC so far has been cool. Like, visually have been cool, and then they played pretty cool, too. So I expect that he's probably the same. You know, you guys all got hype about uh, Gold Lewis in the finals. Who was it? Somebody messaged iPhone and was like, you should play the KV to, like, get ready. He's like, nah. He's going to play Zato. I'll be good. And he's like, this is when I lost the tournament. I, I asked Diaphone, like literally after grand finals about that. And he said, he's like, I lab for Zato more than any other character before this tournament. That is a real shame. That is the nature of tournaments though, right? I mean, you know, isn't that how it goes? Like you're so ready for, let's say your round two opponent is someone and you're so fucking ready for him. You're trading your ass off, and then they lose to somebody, and then now you're playing against somebody else who's playing a completely different character, and you're like, uh, uh When he picked Gold Lewis, I did not think he would actually do it, to be honest with you. I think Gobo would rather play Gold Lewis against Eno than Zato, apparently. That's what Daru said, too. And, I mean, there's less of a chance that he knows the matchup. I didn't talk that much about the matchup during the set, though. I mostly talked about him just making the face and doing two six eights and doing lots of uh, four eight six. He, like, loves 486 BT when he was getting deleted. I didn't have to talk about the interactions in the matchup that much. I was going to wait. The minigun shit, that was so tight. Everybody who fights against Gold Lewis or plays Gold, Gold Lewis knew he was about the minigun. Oh, my God. He just... Brrr. He had no bar. I mean, like, he's in such a bad spot. KV and I both, I don't think either of us think Gold Lewis is bad. I just think he's less fun in this version. All the stuff about him where you just have to, like, fight for your life, that stuff's still there. Just fine, like he has okay tools for that. But then when you get in, like your pressure is a lot less fun. Because he was built around the way Guard Crush worked before, and now it's like, well, what about his full screen jump? It's okay. Like, I mean, I don't I know like if you watch the set, you notice that Gobo didn't really do like the air dash BT that much. He did a lot more jump dust and a lot more like float with BRC and stuff like that. He didn't really do a lot of like the air dash BT stuff and it's because they added that in the same pa patch where 6P got buffed. So like, you know, I saw people saying that Gold Lewis beats Eno after this. I don't know if I've seen Gobo beat Daru in a set. Daru was like, yeah, when I play Gobo Zato, I beat him like 10-3 or 10-4 or something. And when I play as Gold Lewis, I beat him like 10-8. That's not to say anything about the matchup is set in stone because of that, but like... I think it's more of a combo of like, he picked the better matchup that he likes playing. And more importantly, Diaphone also probably didn't practice it that much. The Eno mirror was really funny. I love that Diaphone just sent it. I think his, he just took the fight straight to Daru. He's like, I'm not even going to fuck around. I'm just going to hit you and smoke you. And then I'm going to be, I'm going to be first. Like he did stroke first. He six peed first. He hovered ash first. Like everything he did was just like faster. He was just ready. He played so well. I think there's like some people who look at it and they're like, damn, Daru got smoked. Daru's whack. Like, how did he lose and blah, blah, blah. I think it's the opposite. It's like, damn, Daru, who's been tearing it up, like doing so well in all these exhibitions, been doing well in tournaments, et cetera, et cetera. He didn't make it out of his group. That is wild. Everybody played so fucking well. They I know. thought that Daru looked like he had a good matchup spread. I was like, all right, the, the mirror, like whatever. But like, I'm sure he's been playing Hotashi while he's here. He should be okay in the Nago matchup, I imagine. And Sonic was like, uh, I've been playing a lot of people and Daru is like a beast. And then Daru just gets like beat by Uriel, beat by Diaphone. And Diaphone was a monster, beat everybody. I was like, well, I think Apology Man was probably also very happy with his group. Apology Man plays against Soul all the time. He's good in the Soul matchup. And then I thought Gobo would beat everybody. And that's basically what happened. Every player I asked, like, hey, who do you want to be in your groups? Is there anybody you don't want to play? You anybody you do want to play? 100% ratio. Every player I asked said, 
I don't care who's in my group. I don't care if it's the hardest group in the tournament. I don't want it to have anybody from my region. I don't care if I get fucked up. I just want to play some people that I haven't played since offline was here. All of them said that. They're like, I don't care if I get smoked. I would much rather just play people I haven't played in a while. What was my favorite match and why was it soccer versus Rashid? I gotta say, everybody doubts me. Everybody thought I was a hater. Chris CCH popped off Omega fucking hard, going ham, running around the cage and shit. It comes back to me on analysis and I say, you know, I always worry because when people pop off that hard, they tend to like, you know, it's a lot of energy and emotion. And then the next match, they get smoked. Regrounding and focusing and playing the next match is hard. And everybody, Persia was like, well, I love this pop off. And Joe and everybody in the cage was like, yeah, dude, I love a good pop off. Like, psh, what's wrong with you? Why are you talking about popping off? Why is Sage I'm hating? And then he dies to NL in the next match. I was like, well, 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 I've been doing this a long time. Okay, I promise you. I didn't say that because I'm not rooting for Chris DCH. I said that because when you pop off like that, you, it takes a lot out of you. That's why I said that. And then he lost. And then I said the winner of Problem X and Item would win the tournament, I thought. Because I didn't think NL had it in the tank to take it all the way. His play style is really good, I think, especially for the shorter set. But I thought he would get figured out. I was on the side of the stage. It was 3-0. A Red Bull employee, which I will not name, turned to me and said, man, this event has been so fun. It's a shame that the Grand Finals looks like this. And I said, watch. Just watch. And then Problem X won the tournament. I think that should be the takeaway from the weekend. If they didn't realize like how obvious it was, everybody is hella fucking good. I think during quarantine especially you tend to watch the region you're in a lot or like whatever big events there are but like a lot of people that are casual observers or even people who are more serious observers do not respect or understand the other scenes and like what's going on i think like if you've watched europe play strive you know Ural is really good and like him making top four and beating daru and like you know playing really well in that tournament should not surprise you i was not that surprised I think if you watch the level of play in Street Fighter, I think Problem X, obviously, doing incredibly well and being prepped should not surprise you. I think he played incredibly well. And I think that pre-COVID, the players who are doing well and kept competing, they did really well in this event. Could you hear during JDCR's match, could you hear the clapping in the crowd? Literally everybody was like looking at me because I like JDCR was winning and I'm like just loudly clapping right outside the cage and esteban's like why is you, why do you clap so fucking loud we heard that good the red bull people were looking at me like is this guy okay that's my roommate right there bro i needed him to win i bet 20 dollars on him you want to see the fastest 50 bucks i've ever made i got a couple of dinners at least I was nice too. I messaged him and I was like, <clears throat> you know, this Ryu player kind of been clapping people. Like Uzura is like very good. And he's like, it's PC Cami, bro. PC Ting, ain't it? And I was like, I'm about to put that fucking money in my hands, ain't it? What's funny is it was the reverse. I think he he beat NL four straight rounds. This shit right here, when he accidentally won this, this footage. Look at Brian's face. He is not happy. <laughs> oh man, this angle is pretty beast. This face right here, this angle is pretty beast. I can hear this screen. Let's go, Brian. I can hear this screen. He can't keep getting away with it. Oh, but he did. Steve is a bad person to go shopping with because he's a bad influence. Like when you go shopping with Tasty Steve, He's like, yo, that looks so sick on you. Oh my God, dude, you look so fly. And like, you could be wearing a trash bag. He gets so hyped for you about like how you look that you believe him. And then you buy it and you're like, why the fuck did I buy this? He's like, oh, you just wear that with some of this and some of that blue down there and red up here. But da -da. And then you're just like, yeah, you're right. And you buy like a fucking green turtleneck. And you're like, why did I buy a green turtleneck?